The following is an animation of the Mars 2020 spacecraft interplanetary trajectory from Earth to Mars made using NASA's free software tool called Spice Enhanced Cosmographia. And the trajectory data comes from a JPL published Spice kernel, which I'll also be showing how to read that kernel and plot it using Python. The Spice kernel data begins on 2020 July 30th, which is when Mars 2020 launched from Earth, and ends 2021 February 18th, when Mars 2020 will arrive at Mars, which is just three days from now. So we can watch on the bottom how Mars 2020 begins around 95 million kilometers away from Mars at launch, with a relative speed of 15.5 kilometers per second, roughly. And then we can watch those numbers go down as the spacecraft approaches Mars. So it's going down about 50 million kilometers, and then the relative speed is also slowing down as the spacecraft is approaching Mars. Once Mars 2020 is close enough to Mars to be able to see it, we can zoom in to see the shape model that Cosmographia has for Mars, as well as the orbits of Mars's two moons, Phobos and Deimos. We can then also see the Jezero Crater, which is the landing site for Mars 2020. It has latitudinal coordinates of about 18.67 degrees north latitude, about 77.43 degrees east longitude, and an altitude of about negative 2.2 kilometers, which makes sense since it is a crater. And at the bottom here, we now have the relative distance between Mars 2020 and the Jezero Crater. And at this point, the relative velocity is still increasing, and it will for a little bit. But once Mars 2020 reaches the Martian atmosphere, it will start slowing down very quickly due to the massive amounts of aerodynamic forces that occur when a spacecraft hits an atmosphere traveling at kilometers per second. It always happens whenever a rover is coming into Mars, or the same thing when a satellite is coming back to Earth like the space shuttle. So now we will slow down the time a little bit farther. We're getting to about 2,000 kilometers away from Jezero Crater. And this is going to be in 2021, February 18th, about 20, 20 hours, 33 minutes at UTC. And we're getting close to hitting the atmosphere. And we can see the very edge of Mars here is how Cosmographia has the atmosphere of Mars, which looks pretty similar to how it also looks on Earth. And eventually, we're getting closer and closer to hitting the atmosphere, and we'll be able to tell when this relative speed starts getting a lot slower, which is happening right about now. And then we'll slow this down to rate of one time. So this is real time how fast that this Mars 2020 spacecraft is decelerating because it's hitting the atmosphere so quickly, and all those aerodynamic forces are causing it to decelerate this quickly. And it is now about getting to close to 100 kilometers away from the Jezero Crater and is getting very close to landing here. Let's speed it up. We can very clearly see here the Martian atmosphere and Mars 2020 definitely in it. Using this trajectory data, then we can calculate all the latitude and longitude coordinates of the trajectory as it's coming in with respect to the IAU Mars frame, which is the body fix frame that is defined for Mars. So we can see at some point as it's approaching, it starts here at this point, and it's very slowly coming here. And as it's getting into the atmosphere closer, closer, and closer, then it approaches the latitude and longitude of Jezero Crater a lot faster until eventually it lands at these coordinates. We can also use that same data to make our own plots in Python using matplotlib of the trajectory. So if we take the Mars 2020 trajectory given from the spice kernel that came from JPL, and then we can also use other spice kernels that have the trajectory data for all the other planets, in this case, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars Berry Center for this kernel that I use for these planets, we can go ahead and also make this plot, which I'll be showing in Python in the next few slides. So here's the Python script that I used to make that animation of the interplanetary trajectories with all the other planets. And I've shown a few other videos where I go over how to read in spice kernels and then go ahead and plot them in 3D. So I'm just going to go through this very quickly, but I'll leave a bunch of links in the description to the videos that I have that will go more step by step into how to do this. 
But basically, I start with a built-in Python library, so from sys, system import path. So then I can append to the path where I keep all my Python tools so that I can import them all here in every script that I have. And some third-party libraries are necessary are NumPy, a very popular library, and then SpicyPy, which is a spice wrapper for the C functions for spice, which is how we're going to read the spice kernels. You don't have to worry about this because this is just something I made to kind of fool my animation function, uh, but that's not very necessary. What is necessary is we need to know what frame and what the observer is going to be for all the trajectories of Mars 2020 and for all the planets. So the frame we're using here is the ecliptic J2000. And again, I, I'll have a video posted in the description where I go deeper into depth of how this reference frame and the J2000 frames are defined. And then the observer for everyone is going to be the sun. So the first thing you do is you furnish all the necessary spice kernels to get all the bodies of the solar system, which again, I'll have another video, but basically just a solar system kernel that loads a DE432S.BSP. That's, I think that's all it loads. And then this is the published trajectory from JPL that gets all the data for the trajectory of the Mars 2020 spacecraft, which I'll have a link in the description to where you can download that from JPL's website. And then we have to define some initial times. So define them using a string, so this is 2020, July 30th, this time TDB. And then the final day is gonna be 2021, February 18, this time TDB. We then convert these strings into ephemeris times, which is seconds since J2000, using the spice.sir2et function for the date zero and date F. We then create an array of times in between ET0 and ETF using this time step. We define a list of strings, which are going to be the bodies. We then calc the ephemeris data, so calculate the ephemeris data for the Mars 2020 spacecraft, which has a spice ID in this kernel of negative 168. You pass in the ephemeris times, what frame, and then 10 is the, the integer value for the sun. That's the spice ID for the sun. And then plug it into the spacecraft. If you just want to plot this, you actually don't have to worry about this because I just use this for the, for the animations. So you can ignore that. And then for each body in this string of bodies, you're gonna go ahead and get all the states, which is calculated in the ephemeris. So get all the states of these bodies in the ecliptic J2000 frame with respect to the sun at all those times, and then append them to a list. And this is just a string of the body names. So Mars 2020 first, plus all the body names. Those are just strings. And then getting to the plot config, all your labels, what colors you want them to be, the traj line width, estimates and elevation of the camera angle, axis mag, which is basically the magnitude of what the axis scale is going to be, and then distance unit of AU, and then showing it is true. So if you just want to plot it, you just uncomment this and then plot all this, just getting all the states for each one of these. And states, it's just the, it's just the NumPy arrays of the position data and then passing in a plot config. And actually, I think at this point, I'm ready to post this uh, plot orbit function on GitHub. So let me know if you want me to do that, because I think at this point, I'm pretty comfortable with actually posting this. So I have a bunch of, uh, these are just default arguments that I have for all these. And then you're gonna plug in just whatever orbits, all the position vectors of those orbits. And then this is the usual, I've also shown how to use plotting functions, but I can post this specific one, which I think is pretty good. It has some nice functionality. Um, just to do 3D plots. So if you want to put ground tracks in there and all that, but bas so basically there's a 3D function in here that does the plotting. And then this is how I do the animations and I'll get into a future video. Also, let me know if you want me to make it on this animate orbits function, which I have a class for called orbital animator. So yeah, let me know uh, if you'd actually like me to post these and maybe make a video or two about them. So that's pretty much it for this video. Be sure to hit like and subscribe and to share this video if you like the video and to stay up to date with all the future videos that I'll be making. Um, and also, if you haven't seen already, I have the Space Engineering Podcast on this channel, which is also available on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Simplecast. And if you are new to the channel, I have about 50 to 60 videos now covering things like orbital mechanics with Python, which is the main video series. But I'm also getting into spacecraft attitude control series, and I have about eight videos out right now in numerical methods with Python series, which I'll be getting more into. So there's a little sneak peek of how I do the propagate orbit function in the spacecraft class, uh, which is what I use to make these types of animations. And let me know if you have any more questions about Mars 2020 because it's overall a super awesome mission and I think it's just really cool. And also I have video series in Spanish for orbital mechanics with Python that I'm working on. Everything of this, which I'll have links in the description. So again, let me know in the comments if you'd like me to post those scripts that I have and thank you for watching.